It's gonna take more than cheap theatrics to scare me. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Mattel WWE, WWE, Elite Series 77, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. And I know I don't do a lot of wrestling figure reviews. I don't buy a lot of wrestling figures, to be honest, but I'm a huge wrestling fan, even though I don't watch WWE as much as I used to. But I do tune in, well, okay, I like Drew as champion, and I like Seth's Messiah gimmick, but the big draw, the, the reason I watch SmackDown, is to try to catch the fiend. Bray is a wrestling genius. The way he brings back past things and integrates them into current storylines, not to even mention the fiend gimmick is just a cool looking character. And Bray in the Funhouse is hilarious. It's that fine line of silly wrestling, but there's also some gruesomeness, some some down hardcore stuff going on. But then you have the people that think that it's just a stupid gimmick and then turn around and hold the Undertaker in such high regard. You know, the guy that's been playing a dead man with supernatural powers for the past 30 years. Oh, <laughs> okay. Looking at the package, I do glance at these at the store whenever I'm in the toy aisle. You can't help it. If you're a wrestling fan, you want to see who's out there. And this looks like pretty standard packaging for Mattel. On the side, a shot of the Fiend in his ring gear. On the back, close-up shot of the Fiend, Bio, the other characters in this wave. On the other side, that same close-up shot of Fiend. Let me in. On the top, a little bit more window. True effects, that's what they call it. I always forget what they call their version of face printing or photo reel, whatever. On the bottom, legalese, UPCs. But let's get this open, break him out of this cage. See what's going on here. Mattel packages with all their angles and stuff. I never know where to cut. Ah, yeah, I chose wisely. Is this a, oh, well, yeah, I guess you could use that as a backdrop if you wanted to. And getting it out of the package makes me wish I had uh, more wrestling figures to go along with them, plus a ring or something. I've, I've been taking pictures for a few minutes and it just doesn't work without a ring. But I'll be damned if they didn't nail Bray's overall look here. When the promotional images first came out, people were saying that the body was wrong for Bray for some reason, and it, it looked odd, only because people are used to big muscle jacked guys being wrestlers. I think this works pretty well for Bray. He's a husky top guy who has built on some muscle over the past few years. It's not your typical superhero physique, but it's Bray. I think they did change the arm since those initial pictures though. This seems thicker or maybe it's just holding it in person. You're not locked into what Mattel is showing you. Not knowing much about this line, I think this is a new torso. It has the shirt actually sculpted on top of it and I think this was made specifically for this figure. Nice wrinkles to the shirt overall, even here on the back. And it seems smooth, but that's a nice contrast against Bray's tattoos. And I think these are actually more detailed than the actual tattoos in real life, but at the same time, it's a toy. So them printing it on here, it just works. They're gonna stand out a little bit more. Sure, they could be faded just slightly, but they did do a good job here of his older tattoo being more faded than the new work on top of it. And that wraps around to the inside. Same thing on the right side. All this nice tattoo work just punched in beautifully. I feel like the shirt should be a little bit lower to show more tattoo. I think that would be more accurate, but as is, even this works. He's got a different shirt on, whatever. I do believe the tights are new too, at least from the hip down to the boot, because this is the Fiend specific ribbing here on the pants. I shot a realism with some wrinkles punched in. It just adds to the figure overall. I don't know if the boots are reused. It's a nice sculpt with the laces coming down, but it's not the Fiend's cover whatever he wears down here. It should have another piece on top of it covering the laces. They kind of faked it with this red line coming around because this is where the cover comes down to and then his boot sticks out. It is kind of hard to see in the matte black. It's just one of those things. That's also coming back up to here where he doesn't have the praying hands on the chest. I think he's had that ever since his debut at SummerSlam, but you can find promotional material where he doesn't have those hands on there. So I can see where Mattel may have picked one over the other, but I think it may be a case of, hey, we're gonna release an ultimate edition down the line. The gloves have sculpted holes in the knuckles, just like they should be, and the paint's punched in there nicely, and then, of course, you have heel on the left hand and hurt on the right. I think if I had a biggest gripe, it would be the 
crotch piece in general. There's a couple of wrinkles sculpted in, but Mattel just painting that belt on is a huge misstep. That just sticks out like a sore thumb. The pockets are just painted on on the back too. That could have been a sculpted detail. But on top of that, there's a shininess, a glossiness to the legs, and then the crotch piece is more matte. So there's a contrast there too. I don't know. I feel like you can't reuse that head for anybody else. You probably can't use this torso for anybody else. Same for the legs. Why not just go all the way and do a crotch piece too? But the big thing here is, of course, the Fiend mask. If Mattel had screwed this up, you might as well toss the whole figure out. But I do feel like they nailed it. The sculpt, the shape, the proportions, and then, of course, whatever, what was it called? The True FX? Even though it's not an actual face, they use that technology here. And you can see pixels when you get up close, but in person, it's not that noticeable. The eyes are a little bit more beady than I feel they should be, but at the same time, they're hiding back here on the mask. They're kind of scary. The teeth also go back and forth in pictures from yellow to white and both are accurate so them putting white here again if they're going to release another version of this later down the line they can put the yellow there the mask is strapped around here on the side it goes all the way around the back and they even sculpted and painted the buckles back here there is a little unpainted sculpted hair sticking out but that's hidden 99% of the time unless you're just whipping it around and the hair is nice I feel like it should be a little bit more fluffy uh, sticking out a bit more, but this could be also post-match, you know, where he's been sweating and it's laid down a little bit. Although it does seem slightly dark. Still, though, completely works. <laughs> Going over articulation, I'm not quite sure what's up here at the top. It feels a bit like a dumbbell joint. You can look up, look down, and that is kind of loose. The hair sometimes slaps it back to neutral position, but you get it, you can get it to stick. Oh, well, get back there. Oh, that does give you a little bit of tilt though. Swivel, the arm hinges out, swivels around. Swivel at the bicep, and both of these were stuck at first. I had to kind of snap it to make it move, but after I did that, it's been free since. Single elbow, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because you can't bring his hand up for him to listen to... Oh, what? What? Well, it's more of a salute than him listening, but still. Double elbows would have made that much easier. <laughs> That's where it's going to end up most of the time. Hinge, swivel, hinge at the torso, and in the package, uh, well, okay, maybe in promotional shots, that's why it looked kind of weird. If you crunch it forward a little bit, it feels more natural for Bray. But it does crunch forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist, ball at the hip comes forward, not a lot of back, out, eh, not terrible. There's a swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, not going to happen. Unless I force it, bing! Swivel at the boot, hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, and there is an old school rocker type situation happening. It gives you a little bit of side to side. For accessories, the Fiend has his two flat palms. And then he also comes with a pair of grip hands. Easy enough to pop out and it looks really durable in there. And it's just a grip hand, same detail, open knuckles, got the hurt on one hand, heel on the other. And then he also comes with the lantern. It always seems like a big deal when he's using it, like they don't really want to put something like that on TV. So putting it in toy form is even more surprising. And it's not bad, the sculpt at least. I don't like the paint or lack of paint here. I feel like the lantern itself should be blue and the paint apps on the, well, okay, maybe not making it as grotesque as it actually is, is how they made it in toy form. But I feel like this should be more bloody and more shading and there should be some red streaks in the hair or at least different colored dreads here and there. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice accessory and I'm grateful to have it at all, but I may go back and do that punch it up with some more paint. Rubbery handle up on top so you're not going to break that off. And it is hollow, but I think that's more of a cost-cutting measure than it is to actually put a light up there or something. You just open the grip, put it in his hand, you're good to go. Size-wise, The Fiend stands at six and three-quarter inches tall. Like I said, I don't have a lot of wrestling figures, but I had to get a Woken Matt just because that's actually what brought me back to wrestling. When he was in Impact doing the broken thing, I was like, oh, that's fantastic. And then WWE did what they did. And then Cactus Jack, same thing. That rumble when he came out as three different characters, that was amazing. Yes! Here he is against other six-inch lines like the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper and their Marvel Legends Black Panther. The wrestling figure have always run slightly larger but it does look good beside the Marvel Legends crossbones and the movie Thor and just because here's the NECA video game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Donatello and the Mattel Masters of the Universe classics He-Man for giggles here's the McFarlane DC multiverse Superman and Batman and to bring it back around to Mattel here is their Batman and movie Shazam so at the end of the day I couldn't be happier to have a fiend figure on the shelf or in the display or anywhere in my house really sure there's a couple of missteps with this but this is not 
the only fiend figure we're ever going to get. Much like popular characters in any line, they're going to put out that character, get that initial burst of people going, oh my god, it's finally a fiend figure. And then here's a better one, and here's a better one, and here's a different one, and here's this one, and this one adds to this one, and this one comes with another piece, oh my god. And I feel like that's what they're going to do here, but that's okay, because <laughs> since I don't collect the overall line, I don't get anybody else but the crazy gimmicks. Give me all the fiends you want, Mattel. Because I'm already hearing rumblings that there's an Ultimate Fiend coming with the Series 7 Ultimate Hulk Hogan. And I think there they could give him the jacket, maybe the hood, some fists, which I feel like should be standard with any figure, but he didn't come with any. A crotch piece with the sculpted belt, and then the praying hands on the shirt. And then after that, give me a Funhouse beret in different sweaters even the Muscle Man Bray. We need a multi-pack with all the puppets, Rambling Rabbit, Huskus, etc. The Many Faces of Bray box set with Husky Harris and Cult Leader Bray and uh, what was it, Deleters of Worlds Bray and then another Fiend. Just go crazy with it, Mattel. I'm so surprised that it took this long to get a Fiend figure out, but now that that bubble has been burst, bring it on. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.